Hello and welcome to a 1v1 game between Anathan and the Beastie. Spawning on the left side, it's Wham's biggest fan, which is the Smurf account of Anathan with the Japanese in blue. And on the right side, it's the Order of the Dragon Chad, also known as a Beastie, playing with the color yellow. A couple of days ago, I released a video where Beastie played with the Byzantines, and uh, this is something I touched on in that video specifically. After the EGC finals, he said, look, I didn't have that much time to play with Byzantines, play with the Order of the Dragon, and master these civilizations. So he said he's going to invest considerable time, now that the tournament has concluded, into perfecting his gameplay with these civilizations as well. As part of that, he played a lot of Byzantine games uh, a couple of days ago. I've cast some of them, actually. And now he's going to play with the Order of the Spearmen, or Order of the Spearmen, <laughs> Order of the Dragon, I should say, as a Gilded Spearman is on the way from him. Now, the map that we're playing is Himeyama, and it's known for having this little pond in the middle that you can leverage for fishing, something that works very well with the Japanese, given that they do get a massive discount on these fishing boats. But what Beastie has here is actually probably the go-to way of playing the Order of the Dragon. The Gilded Spearman is a nasty unit in Dark Age. It has 160 HP, which means it's actually unkillable unless you run into the enemy town center fire, the damage output isn't spectacular. It has a big hit against cavalry, actually, plus 34 bonus damage. But the base attack itself is not spectacular. But this is a great unit to just park right next to an enemy gold mine and just push away the enemy villagers from it. And uh, one thing that uh, Anathan is not doing right now is pulling away or pulling more villagers to gold. In fact, I'm actually surprised that Beastie is pressuring this, um, this fishing boat. Because it takes a long time to torch down this dock, and I feel like he could do a lot more damage hitting the gold mine. This is especially true because when you play water on a hybrid map, it means that you're delaying your feudal age. It means that you have to commit to lumberjacking a lot sooner. So you don't have that many villagers on gold in many cases. It means that you can actually find the timing with the Order of the Dragon to hit this gold mine before the enemy has enough gold to age up the feudal age with. It's not going to be the case here for Beastie. Instead, he's investing into a second Gilded Spearman. Now, how do you deal with that if you are um, Anathan with the Japanese? Well, you probably have to go to Feudal Age here, but you probably don't want to open Direct Yumis, because Direct Yumis are fairly weak until you get a Bannerman to buff them. So I'm, so I'm actually wondering if um, playing Koka Township and Shinobi might be a reasonable way of dealing with these guys. Shinobi hit pretty hard, and while they don't have massive HP... It's not like the damage output from these Spearmen are massive either. And Shinobi are fairly cheap, so you could actually take some very cost-effective engagements against the Order Spearmen with Shinobi. Of course, with the Order of the Dragon, all of these units are extremely expensive. Essentially count as two units, take two population space, cost double than the regular units, but they are very deadly. And indeed, Koka Township is the landmark of choice. Now... This is only a short-term thing for, um, for Anatant here. Long, in the long run, the Kura storehouse is immensely more valuable because having all these farms for free is actually something that helps a lot when it comes to sustainability with your food economy. However, again, you need something that deals with these spearmen, especially because you probably want to keep these little fishing boats alive. So having the ability to get some shinobi out is actually good value. And Shinobi aren't expensive, they hit big, they are great dealing with Gilded Spearmen, I feel. Beastie is going to be on the way to Feudal Age, Aachen Chapel, the landmark of choice. Nice little placement for him. He's going to have the food, the gold, and the wood included as well. Stone a little far away, but there was just no way to get it close enough. Yeah, if the berries didn't spawn here, he might have been able to place it a little bit more in this direction. So it might have been able to touch the stone. Not a big deal, though, because I feel like um, Beastie is not going to play two TCs here. It's just um, one of those games where he's going to play one TC, maybe Fast Castle, get some Gilded Knights on the field. Because the real value for the Order of the Dragon comes from premium units. Specifically, Gilded Knights are terrifying. It's extremely difficult to kill them, and it's something that can be used to easily wipe out half of the enemy economy in the blink of an eye. 
Ooh, the Shinobi are actually being disguised as villagers here. You see, Shinobi aren't expensive. Um, it's 60 food, 60 gold. Gold cost is a little on the higher side, but food cost isn't terrifying. I think Beastie sees it. <laughs> Beastie, of course, he doesn't see the Shinobi. He sees a disguised villager, but he should know that this is not his own villager here. There's another Shinobi as well. Now, Shinobi hit hard. They have a 20 base attack with plus 5 against melee. And there it is. Look, look at the fight happening. Beastie cannot heal these troops right now. He doesn't have a Prelate. And because the base attack from the Gilded Spearman is low, it means that it takes quite some hits to kill these uh, Shinobi, whereas the Order of the Dragon will lose their Spearman quickly here. And using Shunshin, you can even teleport out of this engagement with the Shinobi, making this even more so effective. Not the best micro ever here by Anathan, actually. He wasn't really focusing this Spearman for a while, and he also had one Shinobi beating up the scout. But when it comes to cost-effectiveness of this engagement, it is on the side of uh, Anathan. Just look at this. 240 value destroyed against 360, but when this guy dies, that's going to swing in the favor of Anathan. Yoink, it's going to go down. It's, it's right now neck and neck. But these Shinobi, of course, are still alive. And for Beastie, he doesn't really have a standing army right now. He's actually making a Gilded Horseman. Now, this guy is also scary. 250 HP is comparable to Knights. It doesn't have as much ranged armor, but damage output is also solid. So in general, this troop... <laughs> nice little TP away with the Shinobi. This troop is like a proxy knight in many ways. It's great to harass the enemy economy, and it's not really on the expensive side of things. It's it's not cheap. 200 food, 40 wood is not um, easy to accumulate. But when you compare it to Feudal Age Knights, it's kind of comparable. So in many ways, it acts as a proxy knight for the Order of the Dragon in Feudal. Nice little push with the Shinobi. Scout actually body blocking his own villager, preventing the escape. Shinobi. Trying their best to beat up the horseman here. One villager lost on both sides. The villager building the dock from Anathan got picked. Response from Anathan was hitting the gold miner. And that gold mine being pressured is a problem for Beastie because he wants to go into Castle Age. So he needs that gold accumulated quickly. Spearman on the way for Anathan. Tower is a little too light and Guild Horseman is going to find some value here. Runs into the tower fire, or the town center fire, I should say. But it looks like both players will be pressured heavily on the gold mine. Anathan did get his dock back up, though. So he does have all these fishing boats working for him. Economies are kind of evenish. Probably slightly better for Beastie right now, though. Spearman on the way. But Beastie, he's just using these horsemen as a diversion. And we've seen this numerous times with the Order of the Dragon. You get a couple of gilded horsemen out. You use them, again, as proxy knights, something that forces an investment from the opponent into spearmen, into defensive towers, and it just acts as um, a decoy, as a tool of diversion, allowing you to get to castle legend. When you're in castle, you can get some of these gilded knights out. 280 gold two, or 280 food, 200 gold is extremely expensive, but these guys are very tanky and they have an insane damage output. That's your go-to unit, I feel like, for Beastie here. More fishing boats queued up here for Anthon. No demo whatsoever. He could punish these troops with demos. Don't forget, demos aren't expensive. And these are very pricey units. So Beastie needs to be cautious not to lose them. As once again, Anathan wants to play around with some more Shinobis. Ragnit's on the way. Now Beastie can see these villagers. But it's a matter of, are you actually looking over here? I think in early game, he should be. There isn't really many things happening, so you should notice a clump of villagers or clump of yellow dots approaching. Tower is also going to reveal the Shinobi here. Um, Shinobi setting the tower on fire here, but one of them will get taken down. Nice little push on the gold mine. And it looks like Beastie is going to play into at least one gilded men in arms here. Spearman now pushing away the knights, or um, I guess the horsemen, I should say. And it looks like Anathan also wants to go into Castle Age himself. Now, this should be a floating gate here, in all certainty. Nice little Shunshin onto the horsemen, kind of bloody blocking them a little, getting some freebie hits. 
And again, these Shinobi, they hit hard. It's 26 attack against uh, unarmored melee units. That's pretty substantial. Tower on fire once again, but this army should not really camp underneath. It's not really an army that can survive very long, and you most certainly should not be fighting gilded men-at-arms under the tower. Anathan is trying to commit to this, hoping that he can sabotage the tower again and just burn it down. But Beastie does have emergency repairs coming in in 30 seconds only. He used it up before. Horseman should be cleaning this up, though, and with all the shinobi gone, only spearmen available, Beastie should just jump out of the veils and repair this. I feel like this was an overcommitment from Anathan. He really tried pushing this gold mine, trying to take out the tower, but he wasn't able to. Frankly, if he threw a couple more torches, he would have forced Beastie to repair this without emergency repairs. See, Beastie, he's going to have emergency repairs come in just in time. If this was a little bit more damaged, he would have had to repair this with villagers. I'm actually wondering if Anathan committed against this gold mine to shield himself while he's aging up to Castle Edge. It's often a thing you're willing to throw away troops to take away the enemy's attention while you're aging up, and that might have been the case over here. Now, both players do have religious units available to pick up relics now. Prelates moving out for peace, they already bring in relic number one. On the other side with the floating gate, spawning Shinto priests. You already have at least one Shinto priest here for uh, Anatant to get some relics in. Big difference is that you have a lot of mobility here for... Uh, for Beastie. He's got the Gilded Horseman. Not so much for uh, Anathan right now. Anathan is making Mounted Samurai, though. And one of the key things with a Mounted Samurai is that you have this deflective armor. Now, that's actually more valuable against the Order than it is against many other civilizations. Because, again, when you look at the Gilded Knight that's coming out from Beastie, it's a troop that has a terrifying charge damage. The ability to completely remove that is extremely valuable. This priest is a little late to the party as uh, horseman got detached. Oh my lord. It's way too many villagers exposed here. There's a tower, but that's not going to house everybody. Beastie sneaking out of the relic over here. As the horsemen come in, tower. Focusing down the first horseman. It's going to get at least one kill. Beastie trying to get a second one as well, maximizing the damage output. But it looks like... I don't think a single villager has died so far. In the end, I think everybody got away, right? Maybe there was a villager killed, but I just don't see the dead body. At the end of the day, decent response to the raid here from Anatand. Behind this beastie is able to take most of the relics, though. Yeah, he snuck out with this one as well, and there is another one being brought in somewhere. So beastie's going to have three relics. Anatand, he should be able to take this one. But this last one, this might also fall into beastie's hands. This raid is great from Beastie, again, as a tool of diversion. It means that um, he's taking away the attention of Anatand, making it a little easier to pick up these relics. So Gilded Knight, 45 charge damage, 36 base attack damage to the sword, and that is without any of the upgrades out there. Um, these mounted samurai, they do get shredded once the deflective armor is gone. Now, one thing that um, Anathan has is numbers advantage, though. And you see, charge coming in on the first mounted samurai, deflective armor gone, but no damage taken. And this is a big difference. As long as you have a lot of mounted samurai, the Gilded Knights can't really do much against them. Now, Gilded Spearmen is a different story. These guys have plus 40 damage against cavalry. They absolutely annihilate cav, and this is not a fight that Anathan can take without something that quickly deals with the spears. Beastie can hold this exclusively with spears for the time being. Beast is also in the middle of a farm transition right now. Has three relics. And it looks like the final relic might be taken here by Anathan. Mixing in some Spearman himself. And indeed, it's going to be a 3-2 split when it comes to relics. Yorishiro now boosting the town center as well. So, villager production time reduced. Means that the, the nominal villager lead is actually going to increase. Don't forget though, dragon villagers are very valuable. They are a lot more effective than normal villagers are, so... Um, there is that. Uma Bannerman now out. So all of these cavalry will be boosted. And when you buff your mounted samurai with a Bannerman, they are fairly competitive to the um, for, to the knight. HP-wise, it's better for Beastie. It's 400. But you see the charge damage is 37. Again, that is without all attack upgrades here. 
Important thing, of course, Japanese do get plus one extra attack upgrade on the Forge. So they do have a little edge over the HRE in that department. For now, it's nice and chill. Everybody is sitting back and waiting. Of course, with the Yorishiro spawning, all these production buildings are becoming substantially more effective for, uh, for Anathand. And now we're going to have some Onamusha. Now, this is one of my favorite units, actually. It's a crossbow-style unit, but it's also a horse archer. So it has mobility, it has decent base damage, so it's good against essentially all units. But it has armor-piercing capabilities, so it's really good against armored targets as well. The only thing with the Onamusha is that they are very fragile. But aside from that, it's actually one of the most versatile units in the entire game. As a unit that has a front line in front of it, it's extremely valuable. As long as it's not being hit directly, it's great to dish out damage against any of the units that the enemy can bring in. And it's particularly good against expensive, heavily armored troops like Men at Arms and uh, Gilded Knights here. Speaking of Gilded Knights, you see, this is why this bad boy is dangerous. One charge is not enough to kill a villager, but it is able to take out most of the HP. Second swing of the sword actually takes it out. I think the bigger value for a Gilded Knight is that... Uh, in two hits, it's able to take out a villager with um, textiles as well. So this actually makes textiles a little weaker than it usually is, because it takes two hits from a Gilded Knight to kill the villager with textiles and without as well. Knight gets away from Beastie, very important. Of course, with the Order, you have very expensive units, so you don't want to lose them. That's why Beastie is so heavy on the Prelots. He's making sure that he won't just lose these expensive troops. As he's looking to play Imperial Age here, very likely Paso Schwabia is going to be the landmark of choice. Anathan at the same time walling off the northern side, also starting to take the sacred sites here, started the countdown. And now he's playing heavily into the Onamusha. Now, I don't think we have Yorishiros inside these ranges. Yeah, we only have Yorishiros in the stable right now. So with no Yorishiro in here, production isn't spectacular on these. He stays sending in a Gilded Knight once again. He sees the Onamusha. Question is, what exactly is going to do against them? Onamusha's best counter by far is mass archers, but generally speaking, with the Order, you don't want to play heavy archers. Or, in general, with HRE. I think the Order is happier playing archers than uh, the normal HRE is, but it's still not your primary unit that you want to go for. Granted, you see, with Dragon Scale Leather, it's actually going to be a fairly versatile unit. And because it's an Order Archer, it actually has decent base attack as well. We can take a look at um, the exact stats. So again, I feel like the Order is a little happier playing Archers than normal HRE is. But generally speaking, your go-to units are still supposed to be Gilded Men at Arms, Gilded Knights, Hand Cannoneers, insane, of course, for uh, the Order. Lansknechte as well in late game. But Beast is up to Imperial. So he's going to start pumping out veils like there is no tomorrow. And this also means that he's going to have access to bombardment placements. Now, if you're Anathend, you could think about playing around the Sacred Site victory condition, but 8 minutes is a long time, and Beastie already has some sort of an army. So I feel like 8 minutes is more than enough time for Beastie to build up his eco, and then muster a force that decimates you in Imperial. Defensive towers are very effective against the Onamusha because of their low HP. Nice little Vololo by Beast to keep these cavalry troops from closing distance. So now Yorishiro used on the blacksmith to grab a bunch of upgrades. And we're going to have some more Onamusha coming in. What I would love to see, by the way, from Anathan is a demo. Or maybe even two. Here's the thing. Beast's army is mostly men-at-arms or melee troops. So you can actually have a demo or two close to the shoreline, and every time you feel like you're being outnumbered or just outmuscled in melee, you can pull back to the pond and force Beastie either to take an engagement that hit, get hit by a demo, or just walk back far away from the dock. It's actually a little underwhelming that Anathan has a sacred site that's completely unprotected. If you ever wanted to play for a sacred site victory condition, this is um, a very easy way to eliminate that option for him. 
But I think he doesn't want to wait out the seven minutes. I think it's just way too much time. Instead, he wants a costly timing push. Now, the issue with this is that it, this is a little late, and it's extremely difficult to do against the HRE. Emergency repairs and bombard emplacements combined is tough to deal with, especially when you even have a defensive keep and a standing army for Beastie. I think if this attack came exactly as Beastie was aging up, it would have been a lot more dangerous, but it might be just a little too light. Beastie with a defensive keep here, Anathan might be able to hit a perfect timing to try and uh, take this fight before the keep is finished. He doesn't see the keep. So he's not really rushing in right now. Keep is going to finish just in time. Beastie will place a relic just inside. And yeah, this is not a fight that Anathan can take. Castle fire, tower fire, dealing with the Onamusha way too quickly. And this is not a frontline unit. But neither is the mounted samurai against that many order spearmen, despite the fact that the spearmen themselves, they do not have uh, Imperial upgrades. Volos coming in here from Beastie to try and push away the melee here from Anathan. Anathan... He actually kills the Monk before the Volodo finishes. He's playing a dangerous game over here. He's trying it once again, but this time around it might be too late. And the conversion comes through. What a move from Beastie, body blocking all these uh, mounted samurai from killing the prelates. Uh, again, I feel like Anathan played a dangerous game trying to snipe the Monks in the first place. It worked for first time, didn't work for the second. And now this game is uh, in a catastrophic state for him. Oh man, even if he didn't lose all these mounted samurai to the conversion, it would have been um, it would have been difficult. But now with this, he's just going to tap out of the game, acknowledge defeat, and Beastie takes this game with the order. So where did this slip for Anathan? It's hard to say. I feel like Beastie played the order as it's meant to be played. He used his precious cavalry, the horsemen and the knights. Um, the Gilded Horsemen and Gilded Knights, to be precise, to get some raids going, and that's something that um, forced Anathan to keep some guards back at home. He also was able to build up his Relic Advantage. It wasn't a massive Relic Advantage, but it was something. But the key thing was that HRE is already a difficult civilization to attack against, unless you have a massive military advantage. Because you have emergency repairs, you have cheap weapon emplacements, it's just difficult to push against them. Now, you combine that with a deadly force of order troops, it makes it even more so difficult. And Beastie just leveraged the fact that Anathan didn't really have the army to push into his base with. So what does he do? He builds up his eco, he goes into Imperial, and now he plays from a tech advantage position, kind of forcing the hand of Anathan, who doesn't really want to go into Imperial and just be delayed compared to his opponent by five minutes into Imperial. Anathan's only option to potentially win this game once Beastie got to Imperial was a one-time timing push, but it simply didn't come through, and with that, Beastie is going to secure the game. Hopefully you've enjoyed this game. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. These help me greatly, and hopefully you will find some additional costs that are interesting to you on the channel. See you in the next video. Have a great day.